All right, so real quick, I wanted to run down my guided edge liquify workflow. I'm still working on the name for that, but uh, this is a workflow that I developed while working on a shoe campaign uh, with these really, really big images. This is like an 80 megapixel image. And uh, you know, you can zoom in and basically see the molecules in the shoe. The photograph is so big. And while it looks pretty good from out here, if it was used small for the web, it'd be fine. But since the brief for this, for this client was for, you know, high res print, like in store stuff that you're standing next to. So it's got to look as close to perfect as you can get. So I basically have to clean up all of these edges. And that is such a pain to do with traditional methods like the cloning tool. So these were taking like bottom line, three quarters of a day each, like five hours of solid, solid retouching to get one uh, looking good because, you know, we had to turn this into this. So you can see the level of perfection of the lines and edges that had to be achieved. I mean, all of this glue, all these chunks here, these hairs, that edge, that all had to get cleaned up. So I knew that I needed to find a way to really speed this up or this job was just gonna kill me. So what I developed was a method of using Liquify and a series of basically stencils. Uh, that are based on the masks that I create in the image because in images like this, we're basically taking all the parts of the shoe apart. These are the masks that we're looking at. So in order to get it perfect, you have to just mask everything out and put a pixel layer in each of these groups. So first job is to create, you know, all the paths that make up the shoe, all the different parts which is great because you can isolate everything. This has kind of traditionally been used for, you know, targeted color correction, but I knew that there was a way that I could leverage these paths that I had clipped out uh, in order to do edge cleanup. And I found myself coming up with a pretty elegant solution that I've used for uh, almost every single retouching job since. And Basically, what I do is use these paths to create these guides or these stencils. And why I call them stencils is because, let me turn that path off. They're basically stencils that allow me to see the edges of these shapes that I'm going to break out. And the reason that I developed this is because instead of cleaning up the edges using you know, like the clone stamp tool or something like that, which was just grueling. I figured, well, since I'm already creating all of these paths that describe the lines that I want really perfectly, uh, there's gotta be a better way to create those actual shapes. And I find that was by using liquify. So what I'm gonna do is go in here and give you really quick demonstration of what this looks like. So let's say I want to go in here and just clean up this upper edge of this uh, sole right here. I've got this smart object. What I want to do is basically just use liquify to tuck that edge outside of the mask. So check this out. Control shift X to bring up liquify and I'm going to zoom in here. Now this doesn't do me any good here because I'm I, I'd just be sort of guessing. Uh, as to where I was gonna uh, push this to. So what I need is my stencil. And so the magic that is show backdrop is what I use to do this. And notice here, I've got all my stencils named really clearly so I know exactly what they are. I've got the positive version and negative version of each stencil, of each mask essentially, but I'm using, I have to use pixel layers to load them into liquify as backdrops. 
So that is really, really, really cool because now I can preview what I'm gonna see once I go back into my masked layer groups. And this is why show backdrop is so essential. Look at that. So now instead of cleaning that up, that right there would have taken me, God, 15 minutes at least. Now I can complete this really complicated edge cleanup job. What used to take hours over the whole image and turn that into just a few minutes of work. When I show retouchers this, they absolutely freak out because there's nothing worse than sitting there for hours trying to clean up edges with the clone stamp tool. Don't want to do it. Not how I want to spend my life. So I'm going to click OK here because it'll be before and after, before, after. Okay, it's not perfect yet. It's better, but it's not perfect yet because this mask that I have these pixel layer, uh, this pixel layer inside, and notice now there's a liquify smart filter on it, so I can go back in and I can do uh, more liquefying later. Um, it meets the top of the shoe right there. So basically what I need to do is go in and do the rest of the job with this base layer because that's what's underneath this filled pixel layer. So I'm gonna go back into liquify and just show you why I have that, that positive and negative version of each stencil. So show backdrop is still on and so that's the positive version of that fill that was created from, from this, this path, that, um, that fill stencil. So now I just drag that below the edge. Super quick, super painless. Because all that's gonna show now is what's inside that soul mask basically and that's all going to be tucked up underneath the edge of that mask so you see how this starts to work out how these guys all start to work together so before after before after this liquify does such a good job of holding together uh the the, the pixel fidelity that this just becomes such an incredibly powerful tool uh saving hours and hours so the problem with this workflow as it stands, it's way better than anything we've ever had in the past. It's super, super powerful, but it is just a pain to set up. First, you have to go through and clip everything out. There's not really a way around that yet. And then you have to go through and set selections, create positive and negative versions of all these, you know, all these paths and the stencils. And then you have to go through and set up all of your uh, all of your masks and all your layer groups with all the names and anything that I do, you know, three or four times, I know it's time for me to automate something. So I have set up actions that will set this stuff up for me. I'm just going to delete all that and I clear the smart filter. And what I'm going to do is run this action that I created called, called my guide setter. So basically it's just an action. Uh, that runs a bunch of other actions within this group. So it's, it's kind of an object oriented action programming thing that I like to do. It makes things easier to manage because using actions, I have to know exactly how many paths I have and set it. I was only, I only had the patience to, uh, to write seven of these individual actions because it's just a pain to write. So I have to go into my guide runner, uh, which runs everything. I have a stop on there that gives me a notice. Um, and I have to know that I've, I've set this to the, num the exact number of paths that I have. Otherwise, the 
action break. So I play it, it says, depending on how many paths you have in your document, blah, 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 instructions, because actions, as good as they are, still kind of suck for this type of process that's kind of complicated. So let's play that. And so see, it's setting up all my guides here based on those paths, which is awesome. I mean, that normally would take me 15 minutes to set up all those myself and I'm fast and that did it pretty quick. So the next guide that, uh, next action that I have that helps automate this, which also sucks, but is the best we have right now is mask setter. So that's going to create my layer stack based on uh, the paths. So let's see if that works. Make sure the base layer is selected. I want this to be my base layer. So, and it very nicely set up all of my masks for me. So that turned a, gosh, probably 30 minute job uh, into you know, 20 seconds once everything's done, uh, clipped out. And so then I'm ready to go good work. But actions really just aren't good enough and I need something better. So I started laying the groundwork for uh, a plugin that I'm designing for Photoshop called Edge Lab. Here is my Edge Lab wireframe. Uh, it's very, very simple. It needs to be no more complicated than this right here. You basically open up Edge Lab and it looks at all the paths that you have inside uh, your paths palette. And you get the choice of maybe there's one like this soul two split that I don't want to output. So I just turn that off. You also get to tell Edge Lab which one you want your silo to be because maybe you didn't clip them out in order. But the beauty of this is that it's reading the actual path names that you've created. So you only have to enter those once and it's going to take those names in. Uh, you define which one is the silo, which is, you know, a uh, term for silhouette or the main all encompassing uh, masked group. That's going to be the whole silhouette of the shoe. And so it needs to define that because it needs to uh, place all of the other layers that it creates uh, inside that silo group. So the thing that sucks about doing this in Photoshop now, even with these actions that I made, which are pretty much as good as it's going to get, um, there's still a real nightmare to look at. I mean, this is what I had to do. I have to move the current layer up just because actions are not that smart. There's no real logic built in uh, to actions. So um, I got as close as I could and, you know, looking inside some of these um, some of the objects, the object actions, I, ca I call them because they're they're referred to by this uh, this master uh, action. Uh, you know, you can see why it was such a pain for me to uh, to make any more of these. And I couldn't bring myself to make more than seven of them or I was going to jump from the nearest balcony. So, you know, since actions are not that smart, they can only look at very discrete uh, properties. Uh, basically, they have to look at exact names. So when you're creating your paths here, you can't create any old name that you want because actions can't like use that or read it. it has to be path one, two, three, four, five, six, exactly as you see here. Can't mess that up. Um, and then the resulting masks have to just be called mask one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, and you have to go back in and rename all those. And it's just kind of still a pain and it feels like it shouldn't be. So those are the problems that Edge Lab uh, solves. So Edge Lab, very, very simple solution to a very kind of complex problem um, that I've done my best to solve in Photoshop and I can't. The other cool thing is the settings. You can go in here and you can choose if you want to just create positive stencils, negative stencils. Uh, you can tell it to create the layer groups or not. 
you can choose whether it creates masks and you can choose whether it copies your base starting layer into each of the layer groups. You can also change the stencil colors. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna uh, develop this, but I think it might be even more simplified into uh, either like a light theme or a dark theme, or maybe uh, just sort of global color themes so you don't have to pick individual ones, but sometimes a different color mask uh, different color stencil depending on the object that you're working on uh, it, You're able to see the edges better because if I have you know white Stencil and I'm trying to adjust a white edge. It's going to be difficult to uh, Differentiate between the stencil and the actual pixels. So that's it. That's edge lab and uh, thanks for watching If you want to get on the mailing list sign up with the mailing list at frequency separation Thanks